you for having me. Um, I I can't read the chat from where I'm sitting, so I will adjust my uh, seat to be able to hear the chat for the second part of what we share together. There's four parts of what we're going to do together for the next just over half an hour or so. Uh, the first part is where I'll tell a story, as Fiona's explained. I'll tell a story out of a box. And then I will wonder about the story. Now, wondering isn't uh, the same as making a statement, and it's not the same as asking a question. A wondering is an invitation to oneself and to others to enter a world of imagination where there are no right answers, but there are deeper explorations into mysteries. And once I've wondered for a little while, I will invite you all to do one of two things. You can wonder yourselves, and you can do that in the chat, or you can do that out loud. I'll probably adjust my laptop so that I can um, respond to uh, little hands up that go in the, uh, in the various uh, things that you can use at the bottom, <laughs> the various participation mechanisms that you can use. Or if, uh, if, you want, if you prefer to write down a wondering, uh, then you can do that and somebody can put their hand up on, on your behalf and, and, and read it out. Um, we obviously won't have a chance to read out every single one, but that's, that's all part of it. Uh, but the alternative to, to wondering uh, in a response to a wondering is to make a statement. You're welcome to make a statement too. A statement isn't an invitation to further, further wondering, it's, it's your best attempt to respond to that wondering. Either of those is good and appropriate as a way to respond to a wondering, either one of mine or one that comes from the wider group. Uh, and then once that period of wondering uh, is over together, the, the last part is where we pray, prayerfully return the story to the box. And then that's the end of this part of the day. So I'm now going to, my head might go out of shot at some point, but I'll come back in again as quickly as I can. I haven't, I haven't done this before, as Fiona explained. So it's a, it's a, it's a wondering for me too. Now, I'm going to begin with the wilderness. This is the wilderness. There's a lot of wilderness. So we need to have just a little bit of wilderness available to us so that we can remember all the important things that happen in the wilderness. The wilderness is the place in the Bible where people go when they want to discover who they are and who God is. And in the wilderness, there was a great mountain called the mountain of Horeb. And Moses went into the wilderness to discover who he was and to discover who God was. And Moses was keeping the sheep of his father-in-law, Jethro. He was a shepherd. And he led his sheep close to the Mount of Horeb.
And there, close to the Mount of Horeb, he saw a bush, but it was no ordinary bush because it was a bush out of which came constant flames. And even though it continued burning, the flames never burnt up the bush. The bush kept burning more and more and more. And he was drawn to come close to the bush. And a voice came to him from the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses replied, here I am. And the voice said, I am the God of your ancestors, of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses turned away out of fear and respect. And the voice said, remove the sandals from your feet because you are standing on holy ground. And then Moses looked into the fire. And he heard the words, I have seen the sufferings of the Israelites. I have heard the cries of my people. I will come to them and I will deliver them. I will bring them up into the land of the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Amorites. A land flowing with milk and honey. And you will go to Pharaoh and you will ask him to set my people free. And Moses said, Who am I that I might go to Pharaoh? And the angel of the Lord who spoke from the fire said, I will be with you. I will go with you. I will go ahead of you. I will go behind you. And Moses said, and if the, the Israelites ask me, who is this? Who are you that has spoken to me in the wilderness? What name shall I give them? What is your name? And the angel of the Lord spoke from the bush and said, I am who I am. Tell them and tell Pharaoh that I am has sent you to them. My title <clears throat> is the God 
of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. But my name is I am who I am. Now, I'm going to bring you all a little bit closer. I wonder <clears throat> what part of this story you like the best. I wonder what part is the most important part. I wonder if there is any part of this story we could take away and still have all the story we need. I wonder what part of this story is really about you. I wonder if there are some things that are clearer in the wilderness than they are in normal life. I wonder why people only defined the wilderness by what wasn't there and were so slow to realize what was there. I wonder if we might be in the wilderness right now. I wonder what revelation God is bringing to us in the wilderness. I wonder what you wonder about this story. I invite you to place your wonderings in the chat or to wave a hand and I'll see if I can find you. Ah, is that Jane? Do you want to unmute and tell us your wondering? I'm wondering if I'm one of the sheep watching it all happening and that what I will be taking away is that I am a witness of something that I cannot understand or fully know, but I'm an intricate part of. Thank you. Celia says, I wonder if it's in the loneliness and when things are stripped away, that's when we have space to listen to God. Rachel says, I wonder, I'm wondering about Moses being worried about speaking, possibly due to a speech impairment. I wonder how God uses us with our impairments. Ruth says, I wonder how powerful a force
wonder how powerful a force it is to turn back or to turn away. Fiona, do you want to unmute? I will. Um, Hannah says, I wonder if there is a clarity and simplicity in the wilderness that makes the call easier to hear. And that when we have to go to Pharaoh, that clarity and simplicity get muddled and it's hard to hold on to our call. Anne says, I wonder why taking off shoes is holy. Bingo, Bingo wonders about calling oneself, I am. Wonder if that sounds strange or if that sounds like the simplest thing of all. Anderson wondered, Anderson stated, we don't need to understand, we just need to show up and present in the now. I wonder, says Judy, if I'm ready for God to tell me to go and do something. If I'm reluctant to go into the wilderness in case God does tell me that. Hannah says that Aaron is the first interpreter, the first BSL interpreter perhaps. Hmm. Naomi wonders, is it important that Moses was alone? I wonder if this is a gift to those of us who don't always cope very well with other people. I wonder, and this is me now, uh, I wonder if you right here, right now, would like to have an encounter like this, or if it requires of you what it required of Moses, whether actually all things considered, you'd rather not. Thomas says, the most important part of this story is within the burning bush, but God needed Moses to carry out his mission, regardless of his impediment. God sees us by what is in our hearts, not by our outward appearances. I wonder what the flames really represent in the story and what they represent for you. I wonder if Moses also wanted to hide from who I am and whether he feared that others would dismiss, discount or disbelieve his story of the wilderness. God says, I am who I am. Tim wonders, is God giving God permission to be God's self. Jane, did you want to come and speak live? Jane. Yeah, yes, I, I would. Um, I, I wonder if, well, for me, my wondering about the flames is that it's energy and the fact that it's energy that does no harm to the bush. And in that energy, God reveals an essence of Godness and offers an intimacy to, to all of us. It is, is extraordinary for, for me. It's not that God knows me in my heart, but God celebrates me. And my me is written in capitals, just as I am what I am is written in capitals. Mm. Yeah. 
Thomas says, God assessed Moses as perfectly suited to fulfill his mission, irrespective of any impediment. Moses did not need fi fixing. I wonder about the, the fire that never burns the bush out. I wonder about it because <clears throat> fire has good elements of light and heat, and it has bad elements of destruction. But in this case, the bad elements are taken away and there's only the good elements. And some of us in this conference know there are good elements of the way we've been made and there are difficult elements of the way we've been made. But maybe this is a sign of hope that we may be, when it comes to forever, when it comes to essence, to use Jane's word, the good elements abide and the difficult elements don't. Beneath wonders, I wonder whether there's an encouragement in this season when many of us are feeling burned out, that the bush was not destroyed in the flames, but kept burning more and more. It was that constant burning that drew Moses closer to God. Lucy wonders, I wonder if God is giving us and God too permission to just be. Gemma, I wonder about the wilderness being where I belong and realize that the strength God has given me to live in the wilderness. Tim, I am who I am underlines that each one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made, each in the image and likeness of God. I wonder where you are in this story. I wonder, as somebody said at the beginning, if you feel like you're one of the sheep. I wonder if you feel you're in the fire. I wonder if you're looking down from a mountain. I wonder if you're experiencing an encounter. Hannah, I wonder if the sheep were there because sometimes animals are the best company. I wonder if we can actually name things good and bad, whether some things are perhaps both and. Ruth, I wonder how much life there is already in the wilderness, unseen, unacknowledged, dismissed. Chris, I am the I am that I am becoming, and I wonder what I will become. me. I wonder if Moses was still afraid that the words wouldn't come, or that nobody would listen, or that even Aaron wouldn't understand. Rachel, I wonder if the sheep are like ideal chaplains, a non-judgmental listening presence. Anderson, God can use the most unlikely of people. Alice, I wonder whether being in the wilderness is a safe place away from the challenges of the world. If we can gain comfort that God will send an angel to surround us when we need to leave. Lois, a statement. I'd like the destructive pharaohs to change their way of seeing the world. 
I want to be joyful instead of angry. Perhaps Bingo's invitation to say, I am is enough, or am I supposed to act? Naomi, I wonder if Moses thought his mission from God was going to get easier and easier and found it didn't. I wonder how often he had to retreat back to the wilderness to recover. Hannah, I wonder if for those of us on the edge, if the wilderness is our safe place where we can be ourselves. Tim, I wouldn't be in the wilderness literally as rocky ground is inhospitable. I wonder if our wilderness contacts with God, our, if our wilderness contacts with God are hard for others, the church and society, to understand as they fear and struggle to go where our disabilities take us to meet with God. Well, it's time to put the story away now. And as I put the story away, we're going to remember the different parts of the story before God. We think of the sheep, chaplains, an abiding presence without judgment. Think of the flames, all their many different colours, the constant fire that never goes out. Think of the places where fire is a force for good and for harm. Think of Moses, whether he felt after this experience exhilarated or fearful or both. Whether the experience made him special, or whether it simply gave him a glimpse of who God really is. Think of the bush, the place where God's revelation happened. We think of those places in our lives that have been locations of revelation and discovery and vocation and new understanding. Think of more sheep, how the Israelites responded to what Moses had to tell them, whether they found it easy or hard to hear. We ask God for the grace to hear revelation that comes through the mouths and lives of others. We think of more sheep, wonder what this story meant for the Jebusites and for the Egyptians. We think of Mount Horeb, where some while later, Moses received the Ten Commandments. We think of how 
the same place can come back into our lives in a different guise. You think of the mountain, the place of inaccessibility, where God became accessible to us. We think of the part of the story, the wilderness, a wilderness that now has a laptop sitting on top of it. We think of the paradoxes of our human technology and the things that never change. And we ask God to affirm in us the things that never change and to be made known to us in the wilderness as God was made known in the wilderness to Moses. We think, thank God for a story that was quite small when it came out of a box, but now can never really go back into that box again, again, again. Amen.